people this is john spielman with my latest column non-agony nowadays that does start with some agony this one um so as i said um in the column if you uh looked at it 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 was originally designated as an agony column for readers to send in two games basically one horrible one which is was agonizing and one which is a real joy a delightful ecstatic one and it's something I am going to do from time to time. So now what I will do just now is I'm just going to check that this is working. And it is good. Sorry, I just had to check that the recording was on. So, um, and I'll turn this mic, we don't need the feedback. Um, so um, I'm going to start today with something which is not over the board but still was both agonizing and ecstatic and it's a construction task which the french canadian computer scientist francois labelle uh picked out or i don't know exactly what he did he may have done it automatedly anyway he he has written code to look for short games with certain characteristics and he passed it on to the american i am stuart rachels and stuart passed it on to me uh, he's been passing me all sorts of fiendish stuff, some of which I've managed, some of which I haven't. And the problem is, find a game, it has to have legal moves, and I should have said it's not entirely unique, but almost. Uh, ending in seven, rook c7 mate with the black king on d7. And of course, it's rook to c7, not rook takes a, a pawn on c7, or anything else on c7. And it is very difficult. It took me nearly a week to do. Uh, I passed it on to Luke McShane at some stage. And Luke said, oh, well, that'll take several bus journeys. And I was actually on the top of a bus, uh, a London bus. You know, we still have double deckers. When I finally cracked it. And I was extremely pleased for a short time and felt very cheerful for quite a long time afterwards. So this problem... I'm assuming that, that there will be some sort of diagram in the final um, output that you see. Um, I'm going to give you a week. I mean, the next column appears in a fortnight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for a week and then I'm going to give some clues. I gave Luke some clues to, before he got it. And um, I hope that with those clues you will be able to get it. Uh, if you can't then I will show you in a fortnight and uh, prepare to be is it amazed or astonished? I don't know if anybody's ever seen Hyperdrive. You probably haven't. It's what was rather wonderful. Uh, UK TV programme or a small mini series. Anyway, in which there was an alien who said prepare to be either amazed or astonished. I can never remember my son can. And um now um if you do find the solution you have all of my uh, admiration but please don't publish the solution there. Crow, in capital letters if you like even, in the comments that you have found the solution to this. Has to be legal moves, has not to be a capture. And um, we will um, publish, um, and, and, and if you want to be able, if you want to crow to me in person, you're very welcome to contact me by email and I will be suitably um, admirous of you. Right, that's the first bit of the column. The second bit is about, um, I've been told basically I should reminisce. So I thought, I remember the time that I lost my glasses in a stream at a chess tournament. It's, um, and I, uh, afterwards, the guy who found the glasses, um, we had a quick draw. And I said, well, it's no open secret that grandmasters occasionally have quite, whatever you call them, quick draws, which don't really involve much chess. And um, I said, well, I don't very often do it, but um, Christmas Day and New Year's Day, I'm not very tempted to play chess. The very few times I've actually been at a tournament on those days. And I also couldn't find the game. It was in Frunza, which was the then name of the capital of Kyrgyzstan. It's actually now Bishtek. And um, we went on a trip to the mountains. I used to go to the city gates each day. And there were these huge sort of Soviet murals 
of Soviet man, the might of Soviet man and the amity of the nations of the Soviet Union, all these guys, different guys with their arms linked around each other, who were then killing each other as soon as the uh, Soviet Union broke up. And um, we went on a trip one day and there, I, I was jumping over a stream, which I don't normally do. I'm a bit wimpy about things like that. My glasses fell off. I assume I had some spare glasses with me or I was a total lunatic. I assume I did, but I wouldn't, didn't have them for the trip. And Leonid Yurtaev, who was the first guy to become a grandmaster from Kyrgyzstan, he was playing in the tournament. He um, found the glasses and we had a quick draw afterwards. It was a Karo Khan. I can, actually, I can remember some of the moves, but it's not really very relevant. In fact, I looked him up and I did play him again also in Goodricker in Calcutta a few years later. And we also drew in a Karo Khan, though that was a longer and slightly more had slightly more contact that game so then the next thing I've done is I've given a couple of games that this guy won in Frunza and the first one is against Mikhail uh, Mikhail Chichin was is he Mikhail I, I've lost his first name uh, I think it's Mikhail um, and um, sorry I'm going to google him this is most embarrassing um, so we're going to have a Google. He's Adrian Mikhalchich. I'm so sorry. Uh, it says M, but I wonder if it was M Mikhalchich rather than Adrian Mikhalchich. I don't know. Because um, you got an M up there, which is why I was being surprised. Uh, if you can see up in, in above. Anyway, he won this game. It's a nice game. And... Um, what did I say in the column? Did I say... Yeah, I think it was Adrian, probably. Um, anyway, it's an interesting game. They sometimes play e6 as well here. Okay. So this is a pawn sacrifice, and black can take on c3 if he wants to, and white gets decent compensation for the pawn. He just recaptures. Black swaps queens and bishop g4 is apparently the only move really to give black a decent game. Obviously white has a lot of time here <coughs> and something like knight b5 is going to happen and the question is can black equalize? The, my engine at the moment is saying he can which you know right if the engine says so I'm prepared to believe it but um, you know I can believe you can certainly play the position for um, white. Anyway they they, he didn't, he just got his bishop out. By the way, bishop g4, of course, uh, would allow bishop f7 check. Uh, sorry. By the way, of course, if. Right. And they played some moves. And white was in time to get in his break d5. And queen takes b7, one of the rooks to b8, queen back, queen takes d4. This is a position, unless white can do something very quickly, black is fine. Black's structure is fine, his bishop is outside the pawn chain. His pieces on the queen side are very, very slightly misplaced, but only for one move, really. You know, you only have to move the b8 rook and everything looks fairly hunky-dory. Obviously if the bishop was on the uh, the white squared bishop was on the long white diagonal it would be a disaster for black but it ain't. It's a long way away. Okay and queen c7 was played and pro possibly queen d7 uh, and Houdini the Houdini's the engine I tend to use agrees with this but it's only a position. Uh, all right And here he took on b2, which is obviously what you want to do. Um, rook a c8 uh, was suggested by Makarichev, who annotated this in Informata. And I've got a line that goes like this, after consulting my learned friend, the engine. Um, And basically the engine 
says this is very good for white, which I think is true. I mean, you can see that although black will get a pawn or two for the exchange, the passed pawn lives, and it's enormous. He played knight takes b2 anyway. And here, the last chance was to play bishop f6. So this is pretty good for white. I mean, certainly white has the advantage. He's won a pawn, and it's his move. So you certainly prefer white, but he has had to play the move g4, which is a bit ugly. And the queen and the bishop, and the, 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 there are a lot of pieces in the f-file, and something might happen there. I haven't really even thought about this very much, but I can believe that it could be slightly better for white rather than a lot better. I was wondering about queen c3. I think you can, you can take and play rook c1. I was just noticing that if queen here, take, take here. And this is more or less a real pawn, I'd say. Um, I don't know if, does, does the engine like queen c3? Uh, no. Not especially. Queen d4. Okay. Alright. Anyway, the guy played bishop b4. And the attire have now played very well. He played bishop b5. I mean, the moves aren't difficult. But you still have to play them. So he wanted to not allow d takes e6 when something was happening on g7. So he went back here. So now takes bishop takes takes you can recapture with the queen and this doesn't really work because there there's a bat rank on prees and you can do this if you want to make a draw but I mean obviously that's not what you wanted clearly that's not what you wanted um, so h3 is a good move it's important to note that in when you're attacking sometimes you do have to play quiet moves I mean it's not such a quiet move it, it sorts out a bat rank just stop for a moment to sort yourself out. And this also, now if queen g6, then then you can take an e6 and take and take in g7. And because there isn't a bat rank anymore, then it's completely winning for white. So when rook ad8, g4, queen g5, winning it. And the guy resigned because there is a threat of bishop f4. Sorry, because after queen h6, bishop f4, the queen is trapped. So a very nice game by um, by white. Okay, so that was... Um, and I'm sorry if I've got the wrong Michal Chishin. It occurs to me now I might have. Uh, okay, but um, a nice game. And there's another game... Um, the other game was against Beliavsky, and it definitely was Sasha Beliavsky who he beat. And he beat him in really rather sparkling style. Um, this is not a great opening for black, I would say. So we've got a dragon, except that this pawn is here rather than here on c7. It's not a great thing for black. He took and played bishop b6, g4, c5. Obviously, you don't think for a minced morsel of untime about taking an f6. Um, and here, Sasha Belyowski blundered. Quite a big blunder, actually, with bishop a2. Um, I, I see that um, I've got some games in here. Shakriya Mamadiarov tried this as black in a blitz game. It's only a blitz game, of course, and he lost it. Uh, the same sort of thing happened, really. He got pinned again on the diagonal. You can see the game quickly. Bishop d3 is a fine move. And white's a piece up, and white won. And this was Yevgeny Naya. Okay, Bishop A2 is a mistake. By the way, the engine... Now, there is an interesting point here, actually. The engine gives us the best chance. Um, bishop takes, Queen takes, B5. Bishop B5, and this rook over. You, you want the, 
you want this rook because you don't want h4 you want to free up a square for your king okay and the engine says queen f4 is best so i thought what's the difference between queen f4 first and bishop c6 and it said bishop c6 and i was trying to understand why is this um different and so b8 check it gives doesn't like queen b4 check i haven't thought about that actually and why that is true so let's have a um queen b4 check king c1 queen takes knight bishop takes a8 and apparently this one doesn't work check here i mean you can do these but you have to think about them a bit and after king to here the queen is going backwards and it all falls apart so what what actually the engine gives is check here and now this move so you're using an engine and you tend to do it a bit too quickly you sort of think oh that's the move and i didn't even initially notice that queen a2 was on immediately without taking but it said this is a draw so i said oh great and glorious master why is this a draw and it got to here and it says this is a draw which wasn't at all obvious to me of course one of the lines goes like this and okay now this is a draw and i realized when i looked that of course the point is that you can play queen takes f3 and that's why you have to in this position um going back to this position you have to inter interpose queen f4 so now rook takes bishop is pointless you just take and take an f6 and after here now you go here and now it just isn't working here here check here this is the best you can do really well queen takes king c1 what i should do is to promote um if queen checks here queen checks and f3 is protected so what i'm doing here um i'm using an engine but when i don't understand something i'm not saying oh great master um thou art great and and effable and ineffable and, and i take your word for it i'm saying why and it's saying oh you idiot it's because f3 isn't protected and i'm thinking oh yes now i understand and now i realize why that intermezzo queen f4 is so important so that's how you have to use an engine you mustn't just take its word for it you have to um think about it and work out what's going on by the way if we go back up here then after queen f4 um uh, still losing queen f4 uh, if knight d7 then you can just take it is the simple thing to do and go rook takes d6 and rook takes b2 is presumably not going to work because f7 is going to hang at the end so white is much better so um, what actually happened in the game was not that interesting take 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 queen c3 with an absolutely humdinger of a pin and i sort of wondered for a second whether you can go at g5 here i haven't actually thought about that and worked out what happens if g5 i assume you play h4 don't you oh rook takes d6 splat sorry that's the simple reason of course it is again i was being stupid so um js so And he basically got a position where he was a piece up and black has a couple of pawns. But I think does black have one pawn? It's not very interesting. He's trying to block it up, reasonable. And here he actually surrendered. Um, 
So white's plan, the, the king side is totally blocked. You can double rooks in the b file, which basically forces b6. Then you play a4 to force a5. Then you go rook b5. And then you can go rook takes a5. And there's absolutely nothing really to be done about that. If you could get a black rooks on a6 and c6, you'd still lose because the bishop would go to d5 and the rooks wouldn't have squares. But, but anyway, it's totally horrible. So there we are. So a fine game by your attire. Uh, well done, that man. I mean, unfortunately, as I said in the article, he died um, in 2011, age just 52, unfortunately. But um, he was a very good attacking player. And here, here's one of his games for you. So um, I'm stopping now. And I hope you enjoyed this. As I said, I will um, give some hints for the construction task, something like um, a week today. So I'm recording on Thursday, but it'll be on Sunday week. Um, so a week after this appears or so, I'll start giving hints. And I'll give probably one hint and a couple of days more than another hint. And then I'll give the solution when the next column appears. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this, and that's that, really.